and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And next up is our program review, community education with Chris Runke and Becca Cyberlet. Ladies and gentlemen, school board, thank you for having us here tonight. Go share, uh, share a little bit more about our programs. So we wanted to introduce ourselves first. We have, since I've presented, probably you too, we have a lot of turnover, so we might not all know who we are. I am Becca Zachary. DPS Preschool and Tiger Kids Club. Um, I have been with the district for 12 years, so this will be my 13th year starting the school year. And I live in Delano with my family. Um, our daughter just graduated this year from Delano, and I've got in seventh grader this fall. I am Chris Rumpy, and I'm the Youth Development Coordinator, which covers our recreation and enrichment program. We also live here in Delano with three children in the district, so I've been here for well, since 2016. <laughs> So the work we do is driven by five guiding principles, and they form the roots of the foundation which we base our programs and our interactions on with the community that we serve. So when we're planning for programming, logistics, making all the in-the-moment decisions and guiding our staff, we always come back to these principles. So the first one is that customers come first. So with that, we're finding ways to meet customers where they are. And we are all one team. Again, we are one community, one district, one department. We are all one team working together. And we strive for high quality programs and staff. So with this, our focus has to be on developing high quality staff that will produce high quality programs. And strive for continuous improvement. Good enough isn't enough. And then we're always embracing what's next. So the way it has always been did, the way it always has been done in the industry. Who's our customer? We come from different worlds even though we work together. So my customers are early learners and this includes children who are um, ages birth up to third grade, actually eight years old is when children end their early childhood years. 90% um, of brain growth happens before children enter kindergarten. So when you think about that, those brain synapses and connections that are happening during that short span of time, um, those are what's needed for successful high-level abilities down the road. And those are things like motivation, self-regulation, problem-solving, communication, and self-esteem. Um, so when you think about that little bit of time and all those things happening before kids are even in our K-12 setting, um, it's important to think about. And then on average, about 40 to 45% of our incoming kindergarten class goes through our DPS preschool program. So we're close to half of that graduating class size that comes through our program. Um, and then when you think about our families in our programs, 77% of families across the state of Minnesota have all available parents in the workforce. So this came from the Minnesota Association for the Education of Young Children and the Minnesota School Age Care Alliance. Um, when you think about that, the majority of families need programs. They depend on programs like ours in order to go out and join the workforce and be contributing and productive in our in the workforce. Then for my area of the department, I, our customers are pre-K through 12th grade primarily. That's where a lot of the recreation mission programming happens, but it's not limited to just that. We are also there to serve all any of our recent graduates, our community members, our senior citizens. So everybody that might not be necessarily associated with the school district doesn't have any children or any family in the district. We're still here to serve those who want to strive for continuous improvement through lifelong learning. So Chris mentioned one community, one district, one team. Um, so in my world, I think about a, a P12 mindset, which is preschool through 12th grade. Um, and really understanding that learning doesn't happen when you start kindergarten, it happens way before that. Um, so our school district's youngest tigers are here and they're learning well before they get to the elementary school. And those students keep learning and growing after 3 p.m. and during the summer months. So with that, in recent years, we've worked really hard to build a strong partnership with DES. Uh, so for example, the last couple of springs, we 
used our last monthly Wednesday PD time to partner up with the kindergarten teachers and we talked through the data of our kiddos that are moving on to kindergarten and they talked through things that they've um, noticed through the school year and you know, kind of like, hey, we should try doing more of this or they're coming in with these great skills and we have that back and forth conversation to make sure that what our work, our work happening is helping them in their work as they enter the elementary school. And then I've also <coughs> had lots of time with Mrs. Schultz and Mr. Ludwig. Um, they're great to work with. And we work together to make sure we help children transition from their day at school to TKC. So we want to make sure that we're sharing the same language. And we want to make sure that kids have similar expectations, no matter which building they're in or which program they're at. Um, and then parents know that they can share information with us, that they share with teachers, and it creates more of a partnership between the three because those kids spend a lot of time in our program versus just going home each day. They almost feel like they spend more time with us sometimes than they get to at home. And then when you think about the after school time, the 3 p.m.s in the summer months, um, children involved in Tiger Kids Club and the enrichment programs that Chris Coordinates. They have the time, they have the space to practice all those important soft skills, like I mentioned before. They have time to explore what they're interested in, um, and then it helps retain that academic learning from the year prior. They don't have as much of that summer slide that we hear about when they're in programs such as ours. It's just even understanding that the Tiger Club, the, the things that they work on during the school day don't just stop at 3 p.m. when they leave. Those things are our things that we're trying to carry on throughout the after school program, the enrichment program, so that is not just focused on school, but it's something that's carried on throughout their entire day and then hopefully they're carrying on over the past and what they're doing. So when we look at quality, having <coughs> programs and staff and community ed, um, in my world, early childhood looks very different from a traditional K-12 classroom. Student success and growth happens through play and exploration, which is reflected in our environment. And a big chunk of our work time and staff time is in setting up that environment to facil facilitate that learning. Um, so our teachers understand the importance of using play to teach literacy, cognitive, and motor skills. So when you walk into one of our rooms, it's strategically been set up so that the learning is happening in the environment that they're in. Um, but to those who might not be familiar with how that looks with three to five year olds, it might sound loud, it looks chaotic, um, it might look unstructured, but that is where all of that learning is happening with those kids. And then as far as out of school time, we want every child who participates in our program to feel safe, included, and welcomed. And I think the greatest measure of that is, is uh, the best way, uh, consistent adults and pre-K and school age care. So if we can get quality people to come and work in our programs, and we can train them and give them the tools they need to be successful, those kids are also going to have a successful time because they'll have that relationship with the adults and feel safe being themselves and explore the things that they want to explore. And for me, the what high quality programs look like on our original side is partnering. We partner with vendors such as Science Sports, Tech Academy, um, Youth Industry League. Partnering with them, they've been in the field for many years, so they've taken the time and invested in their own staff to make sure that they're training them in best practices for when they come into school and how to handle classroom management, but also the time that they've taken to learn the curriculum or understand the curriculum and get that across the best way they can to the kids that are in the program. So partnering with members like that to make sure that those that are the programs are the best that they can be for our the kids in our in our schools. On the recreation side, we're partnering with our community experts, so our varsity coaches. There's some period that if you have kids, they've probably been in one of our summer camps or programs with that, but we're partnering with our varsity coaches who have vast amount of knowledge in their sport and their area. <coughs> They're also able to bring together a lot of other high quality um, adults that understand the game and are able to get across to our kids and understand the other aspects of sport, not just the skills, but the teamwork, the sportsmanship, how to work with how to work with kids that might not be at your same level. Focusing on those types of things, we see a lot of that happening with our with our coaches and partnering with them. But also, we work with a lot of volunteer, parent volunteers. So we've searched out, researched what's the best way for our volunteer coaches to be trained. 
one program we found was through USA Football and Heads Up Football Certification that has brought the way to teach skills um, up to the, the current standards. So it's the program is based off of from NFL experts in the field, but they're teaching now the coaches how to teach the skills to the kids. So when they're first starting football in fifth and sixth grade, they're getting a higher level of training um, in how to get those skills across to our players. Again, with our and with our Sam Lott T-ball um, program, we have a lot of first time first time coaches, a lot of experience with younger kids, first time experience having an organized sport. So I offer a um, coaches meeting, but then at the end of the coaches meeting, we go down on the field and a lot of the a lot of people have hesitation about how do I teach a three-year-old how to throw a ball. So what I do is I take the, I have a best experience in baseball, so I have the, I feel like I have to do it, where we go down the field and we show them, I show them how to actually break down the skill, how to work with a three, four, five-year-old in order to get those skills across to make our volunteers feel comfortable to the initial home first day. They understand what, they, what their expectations are and how to go about it. the good enough isn't enough. Um, in my world, it kind of it looks like the staff development and making sure that our teachers and our, school, our uh, child care staff are um, doing what they need to do to make sure kids are successful. So I have been the representing, or, goodness, I can't talk. I have represented preschool on our MTSS um, district group as they work through that handbook. Um, before that, I was involved in our literacy initiative. And both of those things are very K-12 focused. Um, so a lot of the work that I've done is learn about all of that and then take it and turn it more into what does that look like for preschool. Um, so a lot of what happens, happens before they even get to that K-12 group. So I have to look at what we can do to support that as they begin kindergarten. Um, so I've done a lot of different <coughs> Teams, PD, so it's meaningful to us to see our children where they're at developmentally. And the end goal is the same, but the training has to involve different components. So I've developed meaningful training and professional development for the staff, which aligns to their specific training needs. So we're still meeting that end goal of what the district has and then supporting that funnel into the K 12 system. Um, and then on the TKC side, it's a little more challenging to develop a team which seems to forever be changing just by the season. Um, peer mentoring is a tool that I think works great in this sort of situation. We have such a span of staff who work for our program. Like for example, this summer we've got 15 year old ninth graders, going to be 10th graders who are in driver's ed. And then we've got um, licensed teachers who are off for the summer. We've got parents who just want a fun part-time job, and we've got parents who also want to work for the summer. So we've got this span of abilities and talents and personalities in the program. So I really have to work to make sure that they're using their talents to the best and therefore trickling it down to others and teaching others too. So one of the things we did this summer when we trained our new team, we had the newbies partner up in a group and the veteran staff partner up in a group. And we, I had the newbies think about all the things that they're still wondering about after all the training we went through. Like, what, what do you still have questions about? And then the veterans had to talk through, like, what do you want these new people to know? Like, all the things that are part of the handbook, but you need to know this. And then the team came back together and they had the best conversation back and forth of things that I hadn't even thought about. Um, but just using all those skills that they've got and then helping those new people feel confident in the position that they took in the program. Um, and then another thing is just getting to know your staff and what, what their best abilities are. So for example, we have Mr. Lillian work with us during the summer, who's the FIA teacher at the elementary school. And instead of him just taking a group of kids, we actually have him be our program gym teacher for the summer. And all of his take turns going to him because he's obviously the expert on gym games. And then in that process, new staff, maybe staff like me who aren't athletic, might learn a thing or two about gym games and they can take that into the school year then and have some new tools in their tool belt to go forward. So anything that I can do to retain those staff that we have and give them challenges and um, 
things to make them work a little harder, they're going to come back each summer and they're going to stay with us through the school year. Sorry, we don't have to click up the next slide. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, so one area, one area that for good enough isn't enough that really was a focus for me is um, I, when I first started working here, I wasn't a part of the football program, but then the staff person left and it became one of my responsibilities. Um, and one thing that it used to be is it used to be we had um, dads that had to go play football in high school and were willing enough to volunteer to coach their coach on team and they were just bringing forth that, the skills that they had learned maybe 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago when they were playing themselves. And it, it just, when there was a lot of safety concerns and the safety concerns of the football came out and football was kind of targeted as uh, a dangerous sport, one of the things that we did, well, what can we do to make that better? And again, going back to USA Football, we found, searched them out, kind of figured out what we need to do to help make this a safer sport, what's going to make parents feel more comfortable. And by implementing that training, it really brought the skills from the 1990s up to the current day up here in the 2020. So it kind of revolutionized the way youth football was, was instructed, was, was taught from our coaches. Um, before it's just the skills they had, but now they had to go through a certain case and they had to go through training for two, three hours of watching the videos and how to properly teach and tackle and making sure that it was they're teaching safe to keep your head up, keeping their head out of the play. So things like that, making sure that what we were what we were doing was best for the kids and we found that people met that training and we've seen a night day difference and there's a lot more confidence now and we've seen the results in our registration on this registration on this far up. I do feel a lot of calls from, from moms and dads of the safety concerns about being able to refer back to this training that we do through USA football day with parents and even go look at it themselves and see what's being done. And we've seen a lot of positive um, feedback from that and a lot of and again our registration numbers have come up because of because of that. Um, and then also just from the work that we've done through this this training, we've been recognized by USA Football and we've been um, elevated to a bronze account or a key account with USA Football because of the work that we've done. So that just means that we're doing the work to make sure all of our coaches are trained and certified each year so that what we're doing is the work right for our kids. <coughs> So what does the future hold? So community education is ever changing, right? So what we're looking for is what's new, what's next? And that for us is really driven by our community, by our kids, by the kids in the community, what do they want to do? As things become more and more popular, we try to meet those needs and always determine surveys, evaluations of what what is what is that need? What what can we do to meet them where they're at? You know, we often hear comments lately about how different the world is post-COVID, which is true. But I feel like from my own experiences that these changes are already occurring before COVID ever happened, and COVID just accelerated a lot of this. Um, so we're recognizing that kids' social emotional needs are greater, and we're working to figure out what supporting that looks like in preschool and school-age care, and how we can do our part to support the, the bigger K-12 world with that. Um, things that we're thinking about, we are unable to fill open positions. So we're adapting to make programs run differently, but still effectively. So we're really looking at how we use people and how their day looks and kind of the bigger picture to make all the pieces fit with what we have, knowing that we can't necessarily pull it from what we want to have. Um, we know the dynamics of our community is changing, thus the changing landscape of what we offer and the programs are held. So, for example, our school age care program this summer, the school age group is up in the intermediate school um, just so that we've got more access to space. We're closer to programs like Chris, we can get kids to and from. There's green space, garden space, playgrounds, fields, all the things that kids need to be successful in the program. So um, just thinking about ways that we can use what we have most efficiently. And then we know that the need for quality child care is great, and we need to think of ways to support more Delamont families. We've had the biggest summer on record at Tiger Kids Club this year. We have or had almost 300 registered participants this year, which is a new record, and it's awesome. But with that comes a lot of like, okay, how do we navigate this, and what does that look like? 
So no matter what, we evolve to meet the changes, whether they come back or fast or slow. And it's exciting work to know that how valuable and necessary our programs are to be part of a dedicated team that's driving to navigate those changes together. Do you have questions for us? Thank you. No, nope. nope. great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Up next is the consent agenda, and that has all of the business portion. Um, it's also got the board minutes from last month's meeting, as well as the special meeting from this month. Do I have a motion to approve the board agenda? Consent. I'll make the motion. <coughs> Excuse motion. me, Corey. From Corey, do we have a second? I'll second it. Second from Amy. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion passes. All right, moving on. Consent agenda is really well. Maybe we can pass it. All right. Up next is the resolution for the acceptance of gifts. All right, whereas Target donated $22 for Delano Elementary, um, Elementary School Pie $5, $5,148.09 for elementary field trips, Coborn's More Rewards $612.19 for Delano Intermediate School, Charities Aid Foundation $82 for Delano Intermediate School, High School Pie, $50 for a physics field trip bus. Minnesota Sports Marketing, $2,598.68 for athletics. Delano Tigers Athletic Booster Club, $730 for reimbursement of state softball tournament expenses. $272 for reimbursement for girls cross country uniforms. $6,294.96 for reimbursement for baseball field items supplies and extra tournament expenses, $494.21 for reimbursement for boys golf overages, $5,015.59 for reimbursement for boys soccer trip, $4,949.20 for reimbursement for boys swim purchases and building, $6,100.63 for boys lacrosse reimbursement of expenses, $13.50 for softball reimbursement for additional awards. $18,826.70 for reimbursement for dance purchases. $80 for girls swim reimbursement for record board update. $8,542.57 for girls lacrosse for reimbursement for purchases of uniforms, supplies, and meals. Alex Rozier, American Family, $1,500 for FY23 scoreboard sponsorship. Drama Boosters, $1,272.29 for reimbursement for expenses. City of Delano, $12,413 for reimbursement for disc golf, excavation, and concrete. And ESS Bros and Sons, $500 for Orange Crush Robotics sponsorship. These gifts have generously been donated to Delano schools with the conditions listed above. Do I have a motion to accept the resolution for the acceptance of gifts? I'll move. A motion by Ryan. Do we have a second? Second, Jim. Second by Jim. Any further discussion? We move to a roll call vote. School board member Baker. Aye. Board member Schaust. Aye. Board member Roser. Aye. Board member Johnson. Aye. Board member Black. Aye. Board member Decca. Aye. And board member Green. Aye. All right, motion passes. Moving on, we have personnel matters. Um, there are a few things in there, just checking. Under personnel matters, um, just kind of the beginning of the year hiring, um, employment stuff on there. Um, some contract changes as well as, I believe the superintendent's contract is in there as well. Um, do I have a motion to accept the personnel matters? So moved. I have a motion by Sue. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Corey. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right. Moving on to administrative reports. 
believe I go first. Um, or you want to go first and then me? I'll go first and then you. Sounds good. You'll wrap it up. Thank you. Um, I'll be very brief this evening, ladies and gentlemen and the board. Uh, I shared a little brief update and I thought it would be important. As you know, I've been trying to keep you up to date on some of the minor uh, uh, construction or addition projects. Um, first and foremost, we do have our solar arrays. They are on top of the high school and the intermediate. They just need to be installed. And that date is somewhere around mid next month. But they won't be too, it's unobtrusive work. They won't be, all, all programs and activities will be up and running and they'll be up there installing the arrays. Hopefully about eight to 10 days they should be done. And then the uh, Messonite project, the weather station, we're working with uh, Hennepin County, West Hennepin and uh, they are waiting on their subcontractor to build the fence around the space. They have to have it secure before they put anything else up in there. Um, so that's about a five week time frame out. So we're looking at potentially mid to late August. And again, that's not really gonna be, it's not a part of the campus where not many people go at all. So it'll be very well um, out of the way as far as our current school activities. As you well know, um, Tiger Drive, which was on the plan to be done this summer, is going to be delayed till next summer. Um, the Department of Commerce extended a review and comment process that went out eight to ten weeks. Um, at the beginning of us putting that together, our developer, uh, Wold Architects, did not realize that it was that long. Traditionally, that's usually a two to three week time period. But once we got everything put together, we just needed to make it a delay. So the funding's there. The funding's not going to go anywhere. Um, we'll carry it over and we'll just invest it into the Tiger Drive on the south side of campus come next summer. So, But we will do the review and comment right now through the Department of Commerce. So that will be completely out of the way and we'll be well uh, going forward. We just got to figure out with the person that uh, did the bid for it um, to have that in place for the summer of 24. And that all structurally is it. And I, and I would like to thank our community ed coordinators and our director for the fine work that they do. Um, it's just great to hear mm -hmm. uh, good enough is not enough. Mm -hmm. And I think that should permeate throughout the entire district. So the work that they're doing in their programs is, is well received and greatly appreciated. And there's a lot of times that I've got to make sure in my role and a lot of the people that work in the district is that community ed is the district just as much as K-12. And that's the, where that one team comes from and that, that philosophy that's been permeating through the last couple of years of community. Ed. And we're seeing some really great results and some, some nice innovative programming too to see that come along with it. So appreciate it. And that concludes my report. Any questions for Matt? All right. Um, the board did complete its annual review of the superintendent during its special meeting this month. The review process involves feedback from the board, review of feedback from surveys gathered from members of Mr. Shane's cabinet throughout the year, and evaluating work on his yearly goals. Uh, the board shared with Mr. Shane areas they felt he excelled at and some opportunities for growth. Um, the board and Mr. Shane collaborated on those areas where we believe Mr. Shane could help the district continue to grow going forward. Uh, we just want to take the opportunity to thank um, Mr. Shane on behalf of the board for his continued service to the district. Thank you. Moving on to business manager, Mary Reeder. I also have a very short report as well. We're going to be having our prelim audit for the 22-23 school year this Wednesday. Um, again, our audit will be virtual, which is really nice. They just let me know what they need and I upload it to them and it works great. But we do still have invoices and deposits that continue to come in for this past school year. So I'm hoping to have a preliminary final budget or fund balance report to share with the board at the September work session. Questions? Thank you. <coughs> Board reports, so we have none listed. Oh wait, sorry, I skipped community education. Just so we don't uh, monopolize the entire board meeting. <laughs> I'll be really brief, but I do want to give you updates on some of the registration numbers we've talked about. Um, for some of the programming, we opened up on May 4th, May 5th registration. Uh, we are just shy of 3,200 registrations uh, this summer for recreation management. So that's that, that's just that's a ton of activity, and um, the people that present today are the reason why that things are really taken off for community. Um, most of our programs will start wrapping up here towards the end of July. We have a couple things in August, 
Um, but but 3,200 registrations for a two-month period is, is really tremendous. Um, on the activity side, uh, registration for fall activities opens up on Wednesday the 26th and fall programming. Um, first day back will be on Monday, August 14th. So we just have a short little break um, and then we'll be back up and running. Um, I took a look at, at the, our TAC memberships. We have uh, 875 memberships right now, which includes uh, just shy of 2,100 total members. So a membership can be an individual or a family membership. So 875 memberships that we have currently and uh, just shy of 27 or 2,100 members <coughs> over the last 60 days. And this is summer, this tends to get a little bit slower when it's nice out, but over the last 60 days, we've had over 6,100 check-ins at the TAC. So we're averaging over 100 check-ins per day um, over the last two months of summer when people are out and out. So the amount of people using that facility, even during this great weather, is still really high. Um, Fall brochure has been sent to the uh, printer. The electronic version will be distributed later this week. And then the paper copy will be direct mailed to about 8,600 households um, in the district. And then fall registration for community activities will open up on August 8th. So I know that's a lot of information, but follow up on some of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing I just wanted to comment, uh, you know, Beck and Chris put this together on their own. Um, and we were going over the other day in my office and I was almost giddy how excited I was <laughs> as they were dreading coming in doing this. <laughs> um, but a couple of years ago, we worked together to kind of identify those five principles um, that we use as kind of lenses as we look through our programs. And the fact that they've embraced that and continue to look at their programming through these different lenses on how we can improve is a huge credit to them. You know, I came in, um, they jumped on board. I think we worked really well as a team. Um, but the kind of numbers that we're seeing and, and what we're producing in community ed is, is credit to the coordinators that are really dedicated to the school district. Like, they live here, they have kids here, but they're doing really good work for the, the kids and families in this district. So, uh, a lot of credit goes to them. So, any questions for me? Any questions? No, it's fairly impressive to see. I mean, it, we've had a lot of conversations about community ed over the years, and you've really done a great job with you and your team um, to change. It's been great improvements. It's, yeah, it's very good team. It's a good mm -hmm. team. Do you have concerns um, just space-wise for Tiger Kids Club this school year? Like with numbers, or are you feeling okay that you're going to fit them all in over there? Um, <laughs> we'll, yes, we'll squeeze, we'll squeeze them all in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, you had this record number in the summer program. It's a lot of it's a lot of kids. It's a lot of families to serve. You know, I think we made some changes a couple years ago to utilize our building a little bit more effectively. I think we have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, Beck has proven to me that if they show up, she's going to figure out a way to make it work. So I'm confident that she will do it again. So. Okay. Thank you. Great, thanks. If, if they keep coming, we'll find the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Well, I mean, there's a, it's only so big of a building, you know. And yeah, we got room in the elementary. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find space. True. Just building up. All right. Well, there's nothing under board reports, so moving on to old business. I actually did send Masico's June board minutes, so maybe we can just link that separate. Oh, yeah, we can link it to the next yeah. next month's next month's meeting. Mm -hmm. I'd like to give a glowing summary of that, but it's escaping me at the moment, so <laughs> I would just say read through. <laughs> I suppose I could. We can tag it on next month. Yeah. Sounds I good. Oh gosh. All right. Um, under old business, we have approved the second read of policy five sixteen point five. Overdose medication. We went over it in last month's meeting. Do we have a motion to approve policy? I lost it already. I have 516.5 overdose medication. So moved. Second. 
right, we have a motion by Amy, second by Sue. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, moving on to new business. We are going to do, first up is the first read of policy. Oh, stop. Stop. What? Did I miss one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Twelve A. Oh, what is it? Under new business. Approve. I'm oh, sorry. Under new business. Approve the FY24 through FY26 transportation contract with Stalky Bus Service. Um, you guys have, I'm assuming had time to review it. Matt, do you want to go into detail on this? Or? Well, the committee met once with the uh, company. We did some follow-up. Um, there had to be some right-sizing just due to some expenses that the company has incurred over the last, especially the last two years, with equipment costs and things like that. So we had to right-size the contract a bit. But we got very creative. The team was creative on, uh, along with Mary to kind of put it where we could within the confines of our budget. And uh, I think we came out with a good agreement. Um, that uh, we were able to finalize uh, over the phone the following week. Any questions on that? All right. Do we have a motion to approve the FY2426 Stalky bus contract? <coughs> so moved. Motion by Amy. Do we have a second? Second, Jim. Second by Jim. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Now 12B. Um, approve the first read of policy 102 equal educational opportunity. Um, we went over the first read in the work session. We have a motion to approve the first read of policy 102 equal education opportunity. So moved. Motion by Sue. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second Sarah. by Sarah. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Up next is uh, approve the first read of policy 418, drug-free workplace, drug-free school. Um, we also went over this in work session. We have a motion to approve the first read of policy 418. So moved. Motion by Jim. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Sue. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Up next, approve the first read of policy 419, tobacco, tobacco free environment. Um, we went over this in work session as well. Do we have a motion to approve policy 419? I'll make the motion. Motion by Amy. Do we have a second? Second, Ryan. Second by Ryan. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 12E, approve the first read of policy 424, license status. Uh, we went over this in work session as well. Do we have a motion to approve the first read of policy 424? So moved, Sue. Motion by Sue. I'll second. Second by Corey. Any further discussion? All those in favor say <coughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Up next is, lost it for a second, I'm gonna put it back. 12F, approve the first read of policy 506, student discipline. Um, we also went over this in work session. Do we have a motion to approve first read of policy 506? I'll move, Sarah. Motion by Sarah. Second, Second Jim. Second by Jim. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 12G, approve the first read of policy 507, corporal punishment and prone restraint. Um, we went over this in work session as well. Do we have a motion to approve the first read of policy 507? So moved. Motion by Sue. I'll second. Second by Corey. Mm -hmm. um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. <laughs> <laughs> Up next is 12H. Approve the first read of policy 513, student promotions, retention, and program design. Another one we went over in work session this evening. Motion, Ryan. Motion by Ryan. Do we have a second? Second, Sarah. All right. Second by Sarah. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Up next, 12 I. Um, we have the first read of policy 514, building prohibition policy. 
Do you have a motion to approve the first read of policy 514? So I'll make the motion. Okay. A motion Second by Jim. Amy. Second by Jim. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Get in there, guys. Up next is 12J. Approve the first read of policy 532, use of peace officers and crisis teams to remove students with IEPs from school grounds. I have a motion to approve the first read of policy 532. I'll move, Sarah. Motion by Sarah. Second, Ryan. Second by Ryan. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion passes. 12K, approve the first read of policy 602, organization of school calendar and school days. Motion to approve the first read of policy 602. So moved. Motion by Jim. Second by Sue. Second by Sue. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 12L. Approve the first read of policy 613, graduation requirements. Um, over this work session, do we have a motion to approve the first read of policy 613? I'll move, Sarah. A motion by Sarah, do you have a second? Aye. Who will second it? <laughs> Jesus. Don't move. <laughs> She's doing something here. Um, any further discussions? I like it. <laughs> she really likes that policy. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Sue already said aye. Sue really likes that policy. <laughs> she wants it to pass. All she right. didn't say it twice. <laughs> Up next is 12M. Approve the first read of policy 620, credit for learning. <coughs> Do I have a motion to approve policy 620? Motion, Ryan. Motion by Ryan. Uh, second? Second, Sue. Second by Sue. <laughs> try Any got further it. discussion? Got it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And 12N. Do we have a motion to approve the first read of policy 708, transportation of non-public school students? So moved, Jim. Motion by Jim. <laughs> Do we have a second? I will second, Sarah. Sarah will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And finally, public comment. School patrons are given the opportunity to address the school board regarding items that are not on the agenda. All patrons will be asked to state their name and address for the record. While the board appreciates feedback from the public in this forum, board members will not comment on or discuss topics brought up by speakers at this time. We had no one sign up for public comment, is my understanding. Is there anyone here for public comment? Seeing no one, I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion by Amy, do we have a second? Second. By Sue. Bye. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We are adjourned.